In this video, I'll go over some changes that I made to our setup before we go into part four, where we'll be modeling our flower and then rendering the flower at the end. The first and by far the biggest change is the node layout. So you can see that this is what we ended up with in part three. And while there's nothing wrong with this, it's a little bit hard to know where to start and where to end and where to go when you need to do certain things. Right now, all of this stuff looks equally important. Here you can see that I've taken each of those separate elements that we built and I've put them into these network boxes. These top ones that are colored are the network boxes that we generally use while we model our flowers and animate them as well. While these bottom ones down here are more the utility nodes that make everything work, I've marked all of the nodes that I generally touch for modeling a flower in green. So it should be pretty easy for you to see where you should look if you need to make a change. One thing that I'll also mention in part four is that this animation sequencing has one green node and that's this rig post deintersect. And that's just for the rare case that you've built a petal shape where this first frame isn't actually deintersected anymore. So maybe it's a shape where it ends up looking kind of like this. And then you need to adjust this angle here. So it's de-intersected again. So here on the left, we start out with our petal shape and we have all the nodes related to that. Then we move on to our fill axis. You'll see this in the next video as well, but I will generally have my display flag on this get deformed petals while I work with this fill axis here. So that's where we can control the number of petals and all the parameters on the fill axis and much more. Then we have this bud pose and bloom pose. Again, I'll generally stay on this get deformed petals, but sometimes I'll move it to the bone deform if I want to just look at a single petal rather than the entire flower. But this is essentially where we model the two poses that the animation will go in between. And then here on the right, we have the vellum sim. This is where we set some attributes for vellum and we also add a little bit of surface noise. Then we run it through the vellum sim and we cache it out and we add a little bit of post sim noise as well. And then we cache it back out once more. From here on out, I'll just mention some of the specific node changes that I've made. You don't really need me walking you through this. You can also just download the file in the description. But if you want to do the entire setup for yourself, this will serve as kind of an explainer of what the changes that you need to do are. So the first thing that I've done is just on this resample under the petal shape. I've changed it to maximum segments and set it to 12 segments. Then if we go down here, I have added another UV project. And the result that we're looking for for this is just a completely flat projection of our petal. And this will be very nice to work with when we go to shading later on. And also for some of those surface noises that we apply, it's nice to have this UV2 to work with rather than the previous UV, which looked like this. Doing it like this means that there'll be a lot of pinching at the top. Then here on the fill axis, I have added this multiply growth by mapped U. So my idea here is that if we go to the end of the animation, we can see that all of the flowers have bloomed completely. But usually when you look at flowers, the outermost petals bloom much further than the innermost petals. So what I would have done previously is go in this wrangle and set this one value here on the position to 0.2 or maybe 0.7. And now we can see that these stop earlier. That does, however, mean that if we add a, if we have more of an S-curve ramp going on here, and I just decrease the bloom length a little bit, we can see that these petals here in the middle, they stop abruptly, while the other ones down here smooth out. So the goal there was to not allow those to grow past a value of 0.7 in growth. But if we do it this way instead, and we set the minimum value to 0.7, then we get this smooth animation but some of them are just limited in how far they can actually grow. And this is just an attribute of just float set to multiply growth by a remapped attribute called U. And your control is this minimum value here. Like what do you want to limit the innermost petals growth to? The scale now has two scales, a bud size and a bloom size, and it lerps between them using the growth attribute. The petal surface noise vops 
have been changed to import the UV2 attribute rather than the UV attribute. After making those changes, you should have the exact same functionality in your setup that I do in this setup, and you'll be ready to follow along with part four, where we will finally finish this flower and render it out. Looking forward to seeing you there.